So we've done several videos on iodine in the past. One more recently showing you guys a nasal oral flush that can prevent you from getting sick. And the two older videos, one was iodine in general, and the second was about halogen toxicity, expanding on everything you really need to know about iodine. Today, we're going to brush up on those two older videos, starting with number one, main reason you need iodine is because the government pollutes our water supply with two of them and allows another one to be used in food production. And by one, I mean this family of elements called halogens, fluorine, bromine, chlorine, iodine, astatine, and tennessine. And those latter two aren't important today, but the government puts fluoride and chlorine in our water and bromine is very common in our food. These are essentially toxins. I mean, yeah, we might get them in trace amounts in nature, but in the amount we're consuming them now, they bind to basically every cell in our body, inhibit organ functions, especially the thyroid. And since the government doesn't make sure we get enough iodine and kind of demonizes salt, our body is full of these toxic halogens. And the only way to remove them is to one, remove the negatives from our food and water supply and two increase iodine consumption although you know just taking iodine on its own is certainly better than nothing moving on to number two is the function of the thyroid gland where most of the iodine is actually stored in our body thyroid hormones t3 and t4 help us produce energy regulate our body's temperature in our adult lives but as children they even play a role in our normal growth and development so many people have had their thyroids removed and are on permanent replacement medication. But those people are a good reference for the extreme symptoms you can suffer without a properly functioning thyroid, illustrating how important the organ is. And when these toxic halogens accumulate to a certain point, that is when your thyroid fails. So it's probably very specific to certain areas where the water is especially bad, but it is reversible if you haven't had the gland cut out yet. Uh, so remove the fluoride, bromine, chlorine from the lifestyle and take iodine. I mean, I think I did a whole video on organs that doctors commonly remove and how to remedy it. Uh, we do have a thyroid glandular on organsupplements.com, which is actually the same thing you will get prescribed from a doctor, except what we have is, you know, 100% grass fed, high quality and natural. And I know a lot of you guys are taking this as your thyroid medication. So please let me know how that is going. Number three is prevention of disease. Uh, the Japanese, which are known for being some of the healthiest and longest lived people, coincidentally have the highest iodine consumption. And that certainly has a lot to do with preventing all of these toxic halogens from wreaking havoc on your body for dozens and dozens and dozens of years. And iodine is especially known for preventing breast cancer on its own. So that's a pretty quick overview of why we need iodine, but how do we know how much to get and is iodine on its own enough? We know the RDAs for basically any nutrient are completely incorrect. The government is creating those recommendations just to poison us or make us malnourished. They're either in excess or not enough. The RDA for iodine is 150 micrograms per day, which isn't even a fraction of what we realistically need. Most people, experts are recommending over six milligrams per day of iodine, especially to detox those halogens. What's also important for detoxing those halogens is consuming enough salt, something the government has also made us afraid of. And by poisoning us with mercury through dental fillings, ocean pollution, our selenium intake is greatly inhibited. Selenium being the most important synergistic element with iodine. If we're talking about making sure we're getting every vitamin, mineral, element, fatty acid our bodies need, these two are typically overlooked, selenium and iodine. So if you haven't been taking these frequently or you've never taken them, you need to take some steps to incorporate them into your diet. And I don't like using seafood because of how polluted the ocean is. I mean, caviar is okay because it's super high in omega-3, it's typically higher quality, but even if you're eating caviar every day, it's not gonna give you enough selenium or iodine. So I use 
an iodine supplement on a daily basis, and a selenium supplement maybe once a week, several times per month. And by all means, I would encourage you guys, you know, look up the highest selenium foods, I don't know, Brazil nuts, try to get um, iodine through food if you like to, but see how you feel doing that. And if you're not noticing a difference, then maybe try a supplement and do like a, a control group. And I have sea salt written here, but what I really mean is uh, you just want a high quality natural salt, preferably a land salt because we did mention that ocean pollution, but you absolutely do not want table salt. And uh, salt playing a main role in giving these negative halogens something to bind to as they leave the body. So it's kind of crazy how you know the government says everything is okay, and in reality, it's this like elaborate scheme to poison the American population. So thank you guys for joining me. Hopefully this helps some of you guys out. The main takeaway for me is you know, make sure to consistently take iodine and selenium. So if you guys could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, you can go to frank see all of my businesses, including organ supplements, where we have a bunch of cool things that you guys might want to try out. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you for tomorrow.